It's horrible. It's terrible, and uh, we condemn it. Uh, we uh, really uh, don't believe that uh, Israelis can uh, take some of uh, crimes, and we are shocked. We face zero tolerance uh, to uh, word any kind of uh, crime like that. It's a terrorism. It's terrorism. It doesn't matter if uh, Palestinians are killing Jews or Jews are killing Palestinians. It's terrorism, and terrorism should be not only condemned, but should be dealt uh, in a very serious way. And uh, the evidence at the site would suggest that perhaps it's one of these so-called price tag reprisal attacks. We've seen more and more of these. Uh, some of the Palestinians are saying, well, actually, this is a result of the Israeli government and the impunity with which they've treated extremism. No, I don't think so. Israel is uh, well uh, known as a country that is dealing with uh, the extremists and that we bring them to trial and uh, finally we find them after they are committing their crimes and uh, we really face uh, zero tolerance uh, toward them. Uh, the condemnation is across the board. Unfortunately, uh, you know, it's maybe not the best time to say, but uh, only in the last few weeks we faced uh, seven terrorist attacks that we had many Israeli uh, that uh, got killed. And uh, we never heard, uh, let's say, uh, the Palestinians to condemn it. But in Israel it's very well known that we will do everything we can until we caught them like we did before, like we did in other uh, crimes that were committed. We are still uh, very fortunate to have only few of them because we are fighting very hard in order to, uh, to prevent it. At the same time, you've been having political meetings here and our own foreign office ministers have expressed dismay at the way that the Israeli government's allowing settlements to expand, uh, saying that actually it's very hard to convince even friends of Israel that actually you're in favour of peace when you go on expanding settlements. So why do it? We are uh, absolutely in favour of peace. The last uh, decision uh, was accepted uh, three years ago after the destruction of uh, houses in the same settlements there, uh, after uh, instructions that we got from the Supreme Court, we are democracy, we do what needs to be done. Uh, those units uh, that uh, will be built in the future are in those uh, block of settlements that will be kept in the hands of uh, Israel in any uh, final status agreement will be, that will be achieved, even according to the Palestinians themselves, that they know that there will be a swap of territories. I'm as the chief uh, negotiator of uh, the Israeli-Palestinian dialogue. I can tell you that while we are talking with the Palestinians, we know that uh, they uh, accept the idea of swap. They said it to us uh, more than once. Uh, so uh, we uh, have to understand the people live there, they need uh, all the services that are needed from uh, kindergarten, healthcare, uh, elementary school, high school, and even places to live. So what we uh, are doing is just to enable them a normal life. Yeah, you actually had meetings, didn't you, with the chief negotiator of the PA last week. So does that mean a new round of peace talks are in the office? I'm not going to authorize uh, or confirm any kind of meeting, but we have having uh, engagements uh, with the Palestinians. And the fact that uh, both sides are willing to get engaged after a year and a half, it means that both sides uh, really believe that time has come uh, to try once again. But ultimately, what is your government's vision? Because there's been lots of zigzagging, flip-flopping, well, the idea of whether or not it is a two-state solution. What is your view? First, we would like to change the term from two-state solution to two states for two peoples. That's how it started, even uh, by the leftists. Uh, uh, immediately after the 67 uh, war, they said we should withdraw and it should be two states for uh, two peoples. Uh, we really believe that uh, they should get uh, their rights while we have to get uh, our rights. We know, uh, uh, you know approximately uh, what are uh, the parameters and we would like uh, in the future maybe to try to implement them. But now what we believe that to jump immediately like all my predecessors to the hardcore issues will bring one more failure and we don't want to be there. Maybe we have to look at it in a different way. Mm -hmm. The Palestinians know it, we know it, and we would like uh, to look if there is uh, maybe a, a, a new uh, option that we can go through in order to find out if we can make the progress. We would like to make the progress. The Prime Minister of Israel have said more than once 
that is willing to resume the negotiations immediately without preconditions. I followed the statement uh, many times. And uh, as you say in English, it takes two to tango. <laughs> well, we'll wait and see that come of that one. But in the meantime, uh, your government's been very quick to warn about the risks of a nuclear deal with Iran. What concerns you and what are the alternatives? The alternatives are very well known, of course, uh, to keep the sanctions uh, going on, maybe to impose tougher sanctions. It's uh, very difficult because maybe Russia and China wouldn't be uh, able uh, to uh, impose tougher sanctions, not because they like the idea that uh, Iran will hold the nuclear power. It's only because they believe that uh, tougher sanctions will topple the regime in Iran and then in Syria and then in Lebanon, and it might bring the whole Middle East uh, to fall to the ends of the West. And first and foremost, uh, the oil reserves of the entire world for the next 150 years. Listen. We believe that we are those that our existence is still under question. Because the spiritual leader of Iran said only a week ago, Hamanai, that Israel has no right to exist. His entourage is saying the same. So it's very easy to stay here and to say you should accept it, while we know that we cannot live with the idea that Iran will hold a nuclear power. It will open an arms race, Turkey, Egypt, Saudi Arabia will have the same. They will have missiles with nuclear rates directed toward Israel. Can you believe what the impact it will bring to our country? Will we have a tourist? We will have a, a, a foreign investors, foreign investments in a place that might, might be destroyed in a short time. Even Israelis, the young people will ask themselves, can we live in a place that lunatic in Iran can take a decision in the morning to destroy the Jewish state? And do you think those concerns are fallen on deaf ears? Sorry? Have those concerns fallen on deaf ears? We look at the way America has reacted to what you've had to say. Yeah, listen, uh, those concerns are not uh, based on uh, just uh, illusion. It's based on uh, uh, facts on the ground. All the P5 members, I mean the permanent members of the Security Council plus Germany, knows very well that Iran was cheating for so long time. And we believe they will continue to cheat, even if they will comply. After 10 or maximum 15 years, there will be no supervision. They can do whatever they want. During that period of time, mm -hmm. all the countries are running to the ends of, of, of the Iranians. They are having a, a competition who will be the first one to get the contracts and the tenders and the bids. And according to our assessments, the Iranian income in the, last, in, in the next 10 or 15 years will be between... 300 million pounds to 500 million pounds. It's a huge amount of money that they can use in order to continue keep the regime, the regime in power, to continue financing terrorism. They are involved with terrorism in 30 different countries, trying to undermine the regimes there. No one is asking them to stop it. And all of those terrorist organizations are unfortunately, our neighbours. And of course, the PFI uh, don't seem to agree with that. We're going to have to leave it there. It's been fascinating to talk to you, though. So.